Reserve time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Zotac Cup Chinese qualifiers. I am Loomis. I'm going to be joined by Hades for this best of five cast here. We are in the grand finals between Invictus Gaming and IG Vitality. It's going to be fun to uh, distinguish the two uh, teams, especially when we don't have the player tags at all. Uh, Hades, your mic is hey. really going off. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Five seconds. All right, ju yep, just fixing my audio settings. I think it's... Yeah, you, you, I just need to carry the cast over. I'm just going to sure. quickly fix my mic. Okay, can you mute before you fix your mic? Because there's a lot of noise coming. Oh, my bad, my bad. Is it better now? No, it's, it's really loud. Nice and uh, I think I have some, like... All right, I think it's my turn for drilling today, actually. Well, that's a good start to the cast. Uh, yeah. So we saw both of these teams essentially destroy their opponent yesterday. Um, it wasn't a kind of clean 2-0 sweep, but it was actually a pretty... Uh, how, how to put it? It was a... Uh, it was really never in doubt that IG was going to win their best of three. IG V versus their opponent was a little bit closer. That was the one against CDEC, right? IG V. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember that one. That was, that was really close as well. I, that was the back and forth where basically both teams lost like two lanes of racks and somehow IGV still ended up winning even though we... You know, CDEC had a really good chance of coming back as well. IG, well, what, what can you say? Just B-God giving up, man. So not, yeah, he was giving up farm. And they still give away Trend Protector, but... Okay, on the bright side, both teams, they do understand very well that you can't give away the Omni Knight. Omni Knight Trend Protector is just... Two cancers, dude. It's two cancers. Yeah, so, uh, well, we're gonna see Bubblega playing the Tree and Protector again. And we'll see exactly how it'll pay off. Um, we'll see whether it was just a one game thing. I mean, we saw IG Vitality actually do something similar with the Tree and Pick, although I don't think that one was nearly as successful, at least in the lane stage. But here we go, the, the counter. Uh, Ember Spirit right from the get go. Ability to destroy trees, ability to catch tree in the mid game. And. That shall be good. Um, well, okay, yesterday, for those of you who, who weren't watching, I did mention that Trend Protector, the only reason why it probably worked out the way it did was kind of down to the draft. Burning was giving up farm. But this time, it looks like they're giving Burning the Juggernaut. And you take that to Trend Protector, hopefully the game won't last that long, where it gets to a point where your Trend has to basically rat yeah, with an Axe and Octarine Core. So... Like, but like you said, you know, Ember is a great hero at split pushing, it's good at catching as well. Especially with destroying the trees part. So they don't have to worry too much about those eyes. Other heroes they could consider could also be that Timbersaw if they really wanted to get funky of cutting the trees. But I doubt we'll get to such a stage this game. You know, both teams know very well how to play against the trio, seeing as they live in the same team house. Yeah, uh, I'm sure strategies will share, or at least IGV watch, IG play. But... I wonder if they're going to pick more than this. Seconds. Maybe Ember isn't enough by himself. You, you pick something else to counter your tree. Reserve I like how this meta is, or at least perhaps this best of five, is going to revolve around who's going to get the tree and how do you counter the tree. I'm just waiting to see which team, uh, which one of these teams are actually going to give up the Omni Knight. I just want to see it one game at least in this best of five. I mean, we have... Hopefully we actually could go all five games too. But alright, Rubik coming out. That'll be a five. You're laning. Rubik into a jug spin, pretty classic. It's a great threat against the Magnus as well. IG Vitality, it may reconsider going to something like uh, a Silencer, for example. Like Arcane Curse also helps against the Living Armor. Ten seconds to go. Sort of. Sort of. No, well, you've got the slow. You make, it makes things easier for the Ember to catch up, especially the Flame Guard. You burn the Living Armor really quickly, and the way Bobaka plays it as a Roma, you he gets more points into Nature's guys, so you don't really have to worry too much about Living Armor. I, I think if you need the slow to catch up, then you're kind of in trouble already, because if Ember Spear cannot catch up with his own ability, something's a little bit weird. But anywho, I do want to point out that Ten it's not super drafting right now. Super normally is a drafter. I do believe this is actually five seconds in July. That's drafting. Yeah, it's in July. Okay. Looks like he had problems Reserve waking up. Time. Hence our ten minute delay. But otherwise, we we're doing okay. Which doctor? That'll be a five. Pretty so can can land RPs and can wake up inside. 
Oh, Lumi. Like professional player. <laughs> dude, tr tr try not to be so savage, man. Come on. I'm just saying like it is, dude. Maybe, maybe he had trouble sleeping because he couldn't land those RPs. But hey, like you said, he did land those at a crucial point. You know, we it was really late. It took him an hour and ten minutes, but he did manage to land the RPs in the end. Dude, if I can't land those RPs, I would cry myself to sleep. So I have no trouble <laughs> going to bed on time. Uh, he he kept himself awake. You know, it's just like one of those. It's just like one of those moments where you like, okay, I'm gonna gain back the MMR I lost. And you end up playing till 5 a.m. and you end up losing more. So something like that. All right, IG's Got getting it. the entire draft they want. Uh, one thing I again I have to stress is this tree is not gonna be as effective as what we saw yesterday. Ember Indeed. Spirit is gonna lock him down. Uh, Slark. And now Slark. That's Oof. two good heroes that can Maybe actually hunt bad. tree in. And I think Slark's ability will allow you to find trees, eyes eyes in the forest. Correct? Because mm -hmm. it's they gonna have, help a lot of the vision game. Yeah, they they will. I mean, it, it may get to a point where at a certain point Slark's passive is just always off because he's always <laughs> seen. But now it gives you some more information on where those trees might be. Well, that's if IGV actually. Uh, they can actually snowball really hard off the lane it's alone. Like, just look at the Ember. If he gets a good start, he can just go around causing havoc. Medusa isn't exactly going to be dealing that kind of high DPS early. Once again, you just look to burning to create space. And this is not a venge. This is a jug. It's going to be much harder. There's no way he's swapping anyone in. Once he goes in, he's just dead. Yeah, that's that's uh, the big concern. I mean, in exchange, they have Healing Ward as a way to keep Medusa alive. Healing Ward plus Living Armor is decent. But I, I'm more concerned about the fact that yesterday we saw Burning was able to transition from a 1 to a 5. I'm not sure whether Ten seconds he to planned to do that or it just ended up like that. But Juggernaut cannot make that same transition and have a relevancy in the game. So if Treant's going to eat the map's farm, Medusa's going to suffer, Juggernaut's going to suffer. Reserve time. Uh, so I think I think we're going to play a little bit more standard retreat game Dyer's instead big. of the I'm going to eat the whole map's farm Treant. That's true. Um, just IG's draft in general is just so greedy. Usually, you don't want to challenge the greed, but IG Vitality have good enough heroes to punish this level of greed, especially yeah, between the Medusa and the Treant. It's going to be so sad if we see this Jug end up becoming that pause 5, though. Alright, looks like there is some complaint about audio balance. Reserve time. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to make a fix. You sound like you're a bit further away from your mic today. Uh, okay, let me move my mic closer. Okay. Is it closer now? Yeah, I mean, I can, so I can so. stir myself up too. That's, that's. Oh! There's a punch pick! That will also find trees. More importantly, it puts Medusa in more of an awkward spot, right? Hook mm -hmm. into, into bite, and suddenly your team can't really get there in time. And let me tell you, Rot is one of the best ways to mess with living armor. Indeed. Well, not against the towers part, Ten at least for that. But. Okay, this is fun. We're gonna have we start out game one. This is a good way to start the morning, or unless you guys are on the other side of the world and good night, I guess. But all right, Puck, they want to contest it. So this offlane Puck. It's not an offlane solo Puck. I don't think offlane solo Puck is possible. But if you put a tree there, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we see how Bobaka just helps to create so much pressure in the lanes. All right, I'm gonna quickly run to get a glass of water. I should have been prepared, right. but I'll be back, boys. Well, anyways, hi, chat. How are you guys doing? And yeah, well, Lumi's just off fixing his mic. Hope you guys are having a good time. And in chat, we have a good for you best of five between the Invictus Gaming squads. One of these squads are gonna qualify for the Zotac Cup, which is all the way in Taiwan. Pretty big prize pool as well. And yeah, I mean Taiwan's a good place. Lumi says that you can never get hungry when you're there. Although I'm pretty sure some of you in chat probably a bit traumatized by you know the Slark pick. We have all had those moments where you think, okay, we really shut down the Slark in the lane. Somehow, 20 minutes later, he's like Shadow Blade, Echo Saber, stomping everyone else, and you're like, shit. But then we ban this hero. Ah. Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of sad if, you know, like, give Burning Venge when he's like 8.6k, but yeah, 8.6k and somehow you're just reduced to playing that. That's kind of sad. Better get ready. 
But yeah. Good start, good start. Yeah, we good, we good. Game just started. Burning climbed to like another 100 MMR, man. He's 8.6k now. Road to 9k. I'm still like too soft compared to you. Is that what's happening? It's just a 5 minute delay. I thought we were on a 2 minute delay now. 2 minute? Yeah. Is it? Alright, yeah, 2 minutes. Well, viewers, let us know if uh, the audio needs to be balanced. Obviously, when I cast, I'm also louder than when I'm going through the draft, but yeah, let us know. All right, so kind of first big divergence here. We have in the Trina build, poor man shield. Oh, they're going to find a Slark, are they? Slark oh. does have pounds available. Wait, how did he see them? I'm not sure if I'm getting a bit of lag, but I don't think he saw them in the smoke. Like, he moved all the way up. They were still smoked up. All right. At the very least, smoke's going to give them a chance to get all the rewards. Yeah, it looks like they will be able to get all the rewards. Now, Putch used to be picked a lot, but ever since they changed all the pooling mechanics and made the mid pool not possible anymore, Pudge is not seen. So this is a uh, pretty pretty YOLO pick by uh, by in July. This is Dogfight piloting it. We shall see. Punch, yeah, you you have to actually time the hook now. You can't just yield and hook someone and it automatically pulls out. You actually have to wait for it to end. So I like the mechanics to that. It makes Pudge like a much harder hero to master in that sense. And regarding the mid pull part, or at least with the trick pulls, you still can do the morphling apparently. Okay. Oh, middle lane. Yeah, that's a dead Medusa. Unless we have some port coming in, it's gonna be a port, yeah. but it's gonna be too late. That was, I think, more to the mistake of uh, the mid player because he, you just saw Pudge running up to him. It was really no surprise. I'm sure the Witch Doctor backstabbing has something to do with it, but still, I think that was a, a pretty crucial mistake. Yeah, no one really anticipates a Witch Doctor running at you at level 1. Alright. So Boca? Magnus started up up top, now it's gonna port to the bottom. Yeah, they probably were anticipating an aggro lane since a puck. But then they saw the, like, the 1v1 matchup, so that's okay. Alright, Burning able to get the spin off. Man, what? What are two supports doing? They're just roaming together. Is this like one of those... dual questing moments or something? Alright, there we go. One more time. Alright, Casket flying out. And Deuce is dead again. <laughs> Alright, simultaneously All right. though, they were able to get a kill on the... Uh... Slark. Yeah, on the Slark up top, so... Not too bad. Carry for the carry. That's Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, I think this is one of those games as well where Burning Fury is a bit more comfortable on the jog. No more venge for him. Like, what about the drafts? Do you favor anyone going to this game? Um, I think I favor the Dire side a bit more. I mean, regardless of the fact that we saw Medusa die twice in a row, which is actually a pretty big deal, this strategy eventually has Medusa carrying the team, right? So she getting off a very slow start is not what really uh, will help. But I think this strategy coming out for IG Vitality it counters what Radiant's trying to do oh, extremely well. Pudge, Pudge hook, Pudge hook. Pudge is not going to get any kills here. He's got Shrine available. In fact, I think Pudge might be in a little bit of trouble. Nah, they didn't have any more catch. Lift wasn't called down for that 15 seconds. So he's all good. Oh, middle lane though. Embers, be careful. He can't get too aggressive. Otherwise, he's just going to die. They have the Nature's Guys bash. My star here, actually. Bash! And now, Leech Seed to start things off. The punch coming through. Does not have the Orb of Venom, but looks like they does not need it. Ooh. Ooh, that would be annoying if he missed that uphill shot, but very nicely ganked. Done by Triant. Top line, Casket is going to find... Oh, he just caught him out of the pounce. What a player. Q, making, making it happen. And apparently, this puck hitting extremely hard. No phase at all. I think that's actually how they got the kill on Slark. That one point waning riff. Perhaps surprising uh, Paparazzi a little bit. Yeah, that's true. He just went for the 1-1. One, one. No face shift at all. That's very ballsy. Not like he has an extra nulls, but he might actually just reconsider just getting up the extra nulls with the extra stats. Dude, but in this case, he's actually queued up a Midas. Midas first, man. Midas yeah. gaming, best gaming. The man knows what he needs. Very interesting on the bottom side, burning, leveling up the uh, blade dance. Not something you see too often. 
Oh, it's just a resurgence of the right click juggernaut. I think it's more so on the, the laning situation that's in, right? Without the supports, he's really unable to get a four, four solo kill against Magnus. So no point to actually take up the blade for right now. The blade dance is probably going to net you better CS and allows you to trade a little bit better as well. Top lane, looks like Casca is going to fly out. They're going to focus on the tree. Three man silence, that's going to be one kill. And now they're going to ping out the Slark for the secondary kill. Slark pounds on cooldown, they lift him up, they toss him back, and Slark is going to go down. Double kill here for offlane player. And that is going to be a very early Hanamitis if he's still going for one. Tree and protector things, man. Now of the level 2 nature's guys. Oh, they have a sentry there. Can they get the hook? Nice. Alright. Okay. Dead Trian. Oh uh, no! Trian's gonna eat through. Maledic? That's a level no up Maledic. That's not gonna be enough. Yeah, here's the tango. The regen, he'll be okay. That's so sad though. Yeah, so XSS playing extremely well right now. I've never seen an offlane Midas puck first, so... I'm gonna see the, the effect of this game. Yeah, this is just a sign that he wants to prolong the game. He doesn't want to... He's not really going for anything like quick, you know, which is he, which is gonna create space for the team, and that's actually reason to worry, in my opinion, because like I said, the puck is the one who has to create space with the jug. It seems like a, a lot of the games they just out economy you, right? They just get yeah. Midas. Last time they went for a Midas Omni Knight, this time Midas puck. So that, that's a lot, that's a lot of faith installing the game, just like defending high ground. We saw how they held. They're like, they were okay with losing all the tier 2s, they just wanted to keep the tier 3s. Casket, easy hook here. Dusa did pop the mana shield, but here comes the support. They lift one back, and now it's going to be Leech Seed going out onto Ember. Ember's going to be dead, so he's going to try to take him down. No, the heals are bringing him back up a little bit, but one last right click. Medusa gets the easy last hit. The two support, or the two players to a shrine back up. That is a huge win for the Medusa. Alright. Comeback goal, just like that. And... They actually did even in CS right now. So whatever advantage they had getting the first two kills in the Medusa, they didn't really matter anymore. Especially yeah. since they're having so much action in this middle lane. I mean, Pudge as a pick does very poorly when the enemy team is very far ahead, right? And it seems like we're going to get to that point. Puck, Midas, the Medusa recovering pretty well. And Juggernaut's going to farm pretty decently as well. So I'm really worried about this Pudge pick. So far, it's gotten a couple of early Medusa kills. But I'm not sure if that's enough. Mid lane here, looks like Ember's gonna get lifted, double damage on the Ember, Ember is gonna get right click down, killing spree on the Medusa. Oh, she's seen more action. I was gonna make a dirty joke, but let's leave it at that. It's yes, already, I, I, I was waiting for it's it. already was three waiting and two on the mid lane, and uh, Medusa doing a lot of work there. Yeah, they know that this is probably one of the best times, but now you can see, like, the Medusa. Usually, so far, the way he skilled it is he likes to get basically more points into the split shot so he can push out the lanes a bit quicker after the Mystic Snakes. He never really gets Stone Gaze until like level 9 or something, but in this case, he realizes that because he's getting ganked so much, Stone yep. Gaze would buy him a lot of time. Although his mana is generally always pretty low, so. Yeah. Alright, so. Magnus is actually doing okay in this lane because of the solo EXP. He's gonna get Arcane Boots. Dagger timing's a bit off though, I expected it to be a bit quicker, seeing it was uh, as it was a 1v1 matchup. Oh, the, the puck is actually... Oh, Slark's, there. Slark's abandoned the lane. He's level 4. All right. Puck is level 7. Oh shit, this is bad. I'm gonna say this game is actually already over. Like... Is it? It is. No, I don't think so. I mean, Look at the on, safe lane! It's level 4! Oh, hook. Hook. Well, you, you can't you can't miss hooks, but you never going into use. the mid game. You have a pudge that doesn't do oh, anything. Oh no, he's here dead. comes a solo kill from the puck. Essentially, yeah, that's a solo kill. Trian is probably gonna die as a result. They have a hook to cancel that TP. They nice. will. Nice. But going into the mid game, you got Witch Doctor as a hero that can't really catch or do too much of anything. Pudge is you know hit or miss. Ember is not doing well. Slark is on dumpster town. He's I, going for a Midas. I guess. You, you got the uh, Magnus, but it's in July playing the Magnus, so we all know what that means. <laughs> so, is this game over? I don't think so. Like, it's Slark things, man. Like, it's only in the first 10 minutes, and we, we've all come on, we've all played against that Slark where like you can dumpster him like 0 5 or something, but somehow you give him like 15 minutes of space, he comes yeah, out but that's, so useful. That's a pup Slark. You let him farm, but I don't think this puck's gonna let him farm. This puck is gonna have Blink Dagger, 
and a Midas. And like three Faith minutes. In July, man. Faith in July. He, he probably came late into the lobby because he had a dream. You know? he, he had a feel. It was like, okay, I'm going to do well on Magnus today. Maybe not in game one, let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. We'll see. It seems like a lot of times when I doubt these players in the past, they... They show me that there's no reason to doubt, but top lane, looks like this Pudge trying to get that level 6 and is about to uh, get ganked. Puck will quickly port back to the top lane. And if this Pudge goes for the range creep, he's dead. Alright, he's dead. Bye. Right. Ninjas guys. Leech seed. Puck's gonna orbit. Silence, no more rot. And Oof. kill going to the Q. What kind, of, what kind of off lane Puck is this? 9 minutes and he almost has a blink. He has yep. a Midas already. Jesus. He's gonna get Blink Midas before this Puck hits 6. So he's gonna Puck. just- Or sorry, before the Slark hits 6. He's gonna just yeah. find a Slark and just kill him. He, he's 3, 0, and 2. He has 5k net worth at 10 minutes and This is- Oh, this is so disgusting. Alright. This is also one of those games. Often it's like, easiest lane of my life. This is actually- Like, I've not seen a lane dominant so hard. This is a really is this a Monkey King ward? On the top lane? Monkey King ward? Yeah this yeah it is. Okay. That's so cute. How to that. live vicariously as a support player. Can't play Monkey King, but you can put Monkey King wards, it's fine. The good thing about Monkey King is it does kinda of teach you how to place all these creepy creepy wards. I mean it's oh, the same logic. Meta truck, right? Monkey King placing meta. Yeah, King it's wards. like this, this is the same logic as you know playing a bounty on a Ricky. It gives you the advantage of just walking into the enemy's territory without any concern. But top lane, right? He, he's tilted by this point. I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. He's like zero well, and four. This is a three-man gang coming in, but after that, they still have puck coil hook. Ooh. Too short. Too short. They jump forward, no detection. Should have passed that dust. And now puck might think about fighting this, or being to the right, not going through it. And puck just plays with them, blinks out. He has a blink. Oh god. I mean, he, it's not even out of the question that if he goes to like a Dagon build right now, so that he can start stomping most of these heroes. Okay. Because he can, he can break the Ember's Flame Guard so quickly. I, I just want to point out that he has three times as much as net worth as a safe lane slark. Are you sure it was safe? It wasn't safe to me. Okay, well, he has three times as much net worth as a slark. Three times! <laughs> In 11 minutes! I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Oh, game game is so hard right now. But smoke play coming up from the puck. He's gonna make space, man. All right. He could pretty much solo kill anybody at this point, right? He doesn't even need to gank with this team. Oh, he's looking mm -hmm. for the Slark. Slark's gonna run straight in. Blink, silence, coil, orb, right clicks come through. But looks like Slark able to actually. Oof. Oh. Yo, he almost killed himself with that pounce. But he had to. He had to. I mean. At this point, Slark may, may be forced to go for like these early game items. He may need to go for like an Aquila. Even a magic wand, even a raindrop just for extra stats, just so he doesn't die. Top lane here, Treant, trying to farm. Gonna get hooked. Oh, they found him! Mm, Punch likes trees. He likes a bit of salad. Easy kill. Alright, good comeback here. Treant, not going for the Hannah Midas that he normally goes for, actually. I, I think in this particular game, going for the Hannah Midas is, pro is probably wrong. I think like getting a medallion just help, helps you end the game fast. Exactly. I agree with you in that part. Like, There's no point in the Midas since you don't need to drag things out. They have such a huge lead. Just look at all their cores. Their cores are respectively in the top 3. Burning hasn't been touched. He has to complete a Yasha already. He can go into Diffusal. Tough game, even if the Ember. Like One of the good things about having the Jug against Ember is that you get a Diffusal bit, you purge the Flame God and your team can wreck him immediately, especially with the puck. Yep. It's gonna be for yours. Well, that's another way to just push the flame guy. Sure. Keeps yourself alive too. Pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just gonna group up. You can see he already went for two points into the healing ward. Alright, here we go. K1. Gonna get shoved in. And of course, we are very far away from uh, having that blink finish on uh, in July. Show me that Pudge pick. Show me the magic. I believe. I want to believe. I mean, Pudge is the only really the only one doing things for the team, right? If you look at the score, he's got four assists, and that's the four kills that they got. It's all from him. Mm -hmm. So he's doing more than anybody else. But the problem is, is just not enough. 
Ember does have the uh, Veil of Discord finish, like you mentioned, and could in theory kill some of these weaker supports. We'll see. Oh, he has dust this time. I'm pretty sure he knows the tree in his round. Oh, he's just waiting for the tree. Oh, the cell scan on top of himself as well, but tree already out of there. Oh, the oh, random he dust. dust! The dust he saw him! Oh, no! He's dead. Oh, he found him! Go, 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 go! Yeah. Easy hook. Oh, easy kill. That almost could have been bad, actually. I thought it was yeah, gonna hook the ember. almost there. missed. Alright, so a minute to kill. This is very uncharacteristic of Chinese Dota, at least. Like, this is really active stuff. I don't know. As of late, it seems like the action is really ticked on more. Yeah, it's piling up. Chinese Dota is getting more and more entertaining. So, okay, you said how Magnus is meant to empower the Slark's farm, but what's going to happen to the Magnus farm? Like, he's still 700 gold away from the Blink. He should be concentrating on getting that. Oh, they want to get the job if they can. They might commit the RP for this. Oh, but the tree is here. Tree is going to get all he of the knows. He knows. I actually think the Magnus up. farm is fine. Like, by comparison to the Puck, he's really far behind, but Puck is like a Superman, right? Like, Magnus is doing a fine job. So... It's more that the, the other team is doing something crazy here. It's just that when you compare Yang, like when Yang gets a solo lane, he always almost gets the Blink Dagger because he... Oh, this he uses be bad. Waning Rift, Coil oh. onto two. They pop the Shrine here, but I think they might even win again against the Shrine. Oh, Pudge just is gonna get down the Swalk here. Okay, pushed away, but the spin is gonna take down uh, in July on the left side. Looks like Puck did go down here, dropping a huge, huge bounty. Death Ward doing a lot of work, but it's not gonna be enough here. And now on the run, Ember Spear jumps back in, goes for the kill, nicely done Still here. Charges, and I don't fine. think he'll be. Yeah, I don't think he'll die. Oh, never mind. They lift him up. They'll toss him back. No crits here from Burning though, and that'll be the end of that. So that was a three for two exchange. I think that's actually a dire victory. They killed the puck, right? Puck had a huge streak. If you look at the net worth change, yeah, the dire actually got more goal out of it. So. Even if you're ahead by 6,000 net worth, 10,000 net worth, you should not fight at the enemy shrine. And Pudge got like 800 gold away from that, just on that puck kill. Great Pudge, stuff, and we got a few kills as well. Oh yeah, he did. And he almost has B BOTs now. Oh, he killed him with the urn, because I'm think i pretty sure Pudge died first in that fight. But I guess the urn was the, the thing that allowed him to take it down. That's that's a lot of gold for this Pudge. Pudge will go for immediate pipe to give his team a lot more safety, but to me that was a big blunder by by uh, IG to take a fight in the enemy shrine. Just wait for in July after this creep wave, he's gonna get his dagger. Medusa wasn't there the whole time, so that's also worrying. Like because she now has the Yasha, the Dragonlance, top of the net worth. She's already surpassed the puck in net worth. That's not a good start. Like usually Medusa, you want her to get it. A good start, but in this case, she has like an amazing start. And this, I'm not even sure how whether they have enough damage at this rate because Slark still is trying to build to that minus at 17 minutes in. Man, you say that's worrying for IG Vitality, right? Because that yeah. sounds like all good for IG. It's all good for IG. Yeah, IG is chilling, being fine. And now it looks like Puck is has a Yul's finished and is gonna cube on Dagon. All right, good stuff, Dagon man. Build, man. It looks like Trian is going back for the Hand of Midas. Is the Hand of Midas finished on the select yet? Looks like it's flying out right now. Uh, that's why I said like the Dagon build is okay on the puck. Because he can just keep blowing up the Slark. Like even with this Midas, it gives him no stats. His net worth actually dips again. Because the Mi you know it's just the Midas, the way it works in net worth. So he can just keep blowing up these heroes. And the more he keeps doing that, Slark is not going to climb net worth that easily. Yep. Alright, smoke. Oh, actually, wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Thought. Bobaka is actually still going back for the Midas. He really wants it. Yeah, I think oh, that's. How quick he moves? What the heck? He's got the smoke buff. Yeah, but. You know, All with right. the extra move. Hard to get initiate well. on him. Blink, silence. That's gonna start things off. Defensive hook's gonna oh. come out. They hook him back out, but the coil will break. They need to lift him up. That's a 5 man RP! Four! They gotta bring him back in the tower. Here comes the remnant. The overgrowth can pop out, but that's gonna be four dead. Medusa coming in to rescue his team. Okay, it looks like Burning's still alive. Despite the three man, four man RP. Medusa is gonna come in and clean up the healing. We're putting Juggernaut alive a little bit longer. Looks like he will eventually go down. Ember is gonna go down to the one last right click. Four for four exchange. Both cores getting a ton of damage done. Despite hitting the four man RP. It wasn't a five. And Medusa was able to clean up. Look at this damage output. Whew. Still big enough, man. I told you, dude. In July. In July. 
I mean, that was that was a that was an easy RP to hit in the sense that IG they all clumped up to just go yeah. for the Ember, right? And that was a very good defensive hook to keep it. Gotta in give place. him credit though. That, I mean, he's fine. At least he's finally hitting RPs. He's not waiting a whole hour to yeah. do it. And the good thing about the Slark now, because of that fight. It's okay that his team dies in a sense where they're supposed to be creating space for him. He earned 1500 gold from that fight alone. Yep. So look at that. Now he has the whole Oblivion staff. Comeback is real. Yeah, imagine if Slark actually had items, right? If that 4 Fama and RP actually happened. Like, he would have actually killed everybody if he had some damage. But I guess fortunately for IG that that wasn't the case. And he is still playing some catch up. But now, IG says, look, you don't have RP. Let's go. We're going to take their tier 2 essentially for free. And maybe even start to think about Roshan. Hook. Oh, that was close. Alright, healing wards. Going to pop out. Burning's going to stand in the front line. He's not afraid. Oh, he's going to find... Oh, nice. Quick phase, silence, or back out. Tier 2 is going to get lifted, and tier 2 is going to go down. I think Burning and his company should uh, go into the Roshan pit. No, it's very hard. They can't. Because RP is already back off cooldown. Oh, and... the... oh no, he did actually park up the Dark Pack. So he's fine. Good reaction here by uh, Paparazzi. Alright, Smoke Chat. Go back out. RP is back up. This could be another big RP here. They have the ward, so the smoke, if it will break immediately, they will know. Radiant will eat the ward. And Q immediately is aware of the situation. Just look at Bobaka's positioning with, like, with Yang as well. They're just waiting all the way at the side. Hook, it's gonna come oh, out. That's gonna can't... be on Medusa. Where's the coil? They need to drop it out right now. Blink silence to start things off. RP, RP. this time's on three, but the stone gaze as well as the overgrow has come out. No damage output is coming out just yet. Burning with the spin, doing a ton of magic damage. It's gonna go right onto the punch. Death War is doing a lot of. Okay. I believe that was the Omni Slash flying out as well, but Burning's gonna go down. Ooh, they only got one kill so far. Puck on the back line. Puck in a lot of trouble. Need a phase. Cannot phase. He is gonna go down. Just like he said, back. in July, had a dream about hitting RPs. And Looks he's like hitting an RPs. Time, man. It's, it's, it's just a 10 minutes extra time. He came in late because he, he was having a really good dream. He was like, okay, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna get good RPs. And now he's showing up to the party, man. Three man RP. That was really sick. On the course as well. Catching the puck, puck couldn't do much after that. So, really good team fight. I mean, I Burning did good. I think Burning Omni slashed some creeps. Yeah, he did. It swapped to the creeps, but he did get the kill on the punch though. Rich Doctor, all well, you know. Give him good credit for that. He he stood his ground. He was like, okay, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna bring you down with me. So Burning yeah. still dies anyways. I mean, at a certain point, as a Witch Doctor, you just know you're gonna die, so you might as well stand there and do as much damage as possible, which is exactly what he did. Oh, but still, you have to give credit to Bobaka for stalling the fight as long as he did. That was a five-man overgrowth. And it's such a pity if the duration was just a bit longer, he probably could have turned the fight around for his whole team. That's why it's at this point where I actually feel maybe having a mech or even a pipe would be so useful against all this magic damage coming out from the Ember. Q in a lot of trouble. He did steal in power. That's actually huge. He probably should keep that one uh, as long as possible. Just let Juggernaut farm. Better he's like, yeah. Easy in power. Give me the farm, that's what he says. Also a lot of damage for these team fights. It might break mm -hmm. out right now. Radiance mid tower. Treant is getting uh in power as well, hey, you know? Or something. Oh that's actually yeah, that's not fun to play against man. He has like such high base damage. You look at Treant, he's moving fast, he sees him. Bash Fish. Okay. The defensive hook, not gonna fly out oh, here. Yeah, oh. Punch the TP bro. out, instant TP out, he yes. knew. Mm, yeah, but also this is where we start to see that thing where I mentioned that if you don't have a draft with, which works around sacrificing farm with the Medusa and the Jug and the Trian, plus you have a Puck Midas, it's way too greedy. The economy distribution is now starting to show backlash onto the Radiant side. So IG, they have they have no choice. They have to drag this out to the late game now. I mean, they're still very well poised, even though the net worth has actually taken a pretty big hit. You gotta keep in mind that it's still working with double Midas's, one on the Puck. One on the Rubik, or not on the Rubik, sorry, on the Treant. On the Treant. So, and then we know that uh, the the Juggernaut's farming extremely well. And we know that Dusa has been farming extremely well. So, even going into the mid and late game, they should be fairly happy. But I think what they're somewhat frustrated is probably with their huge size lead that I already called GG on. Like, 
I, I think they kind of threw away two, three big fights, and now this is much more of an even game. Like, I could actually see IG Vitality making a pretty big comeback now and winning the game late. You also remember how the puck was like three times the net worth of the Slark. Yeah. Now he's actually within 2,000 gold range, and that's a huge climb. Yeah. Shadow Blade, Echo Saber, if anything, you need to start investing in detection on the side of IG. IGV, well, they're gonna smoke up, try to make something happen with the RP again. If they can make some, if they can find multiple kills, that'd be really big. Roshan is happening as we are speaking. Well, in July, can't mess them up with one big RP, but I don't think he's aware of that right now. Wait, wait, maybe they are aware of it. Pudge, thinking about coming out with the hook. It is gonna find Juggernaut. Juggernaut oh. gonna get bitten, did not spin in time, unfortunately. The silence gonna come through though. They have the living armor on, burning as well. The coil keeping everyone locked down. Here's the overgrowth there as well, but where's the damage? Here comes the stone gaze. Everybody's locked up. Pudge in a lot of trouble. Pudge is gonna go down on the back line. Puck doing some work and burning coming in from the front. Gets yet another kill. That was the one hook initiation that they did not want. And now. Burning gets to actually shrine back up with the team. And the rest team gets to finish Roshan. RP, I don't think was used at all. Credit to XSS, making sure that the... Oh my god, what is Ember doing? Ember is going to yield himself up Yolo. in here. And he's out, okay. He had a... He had a... He had a plan to get out, but... What in July was doing very excellently up to this point was... He was waiting for Puck to drop his spells before he went in. And that team fight, he didn't wait for the puck to drop his spells. He he blinked in it at the same time as puck, and I think he got waning rift by the by the puck silence. And as a result, he he couldn't actually cast a single spell. So mm -hmm. that's why this the team fight was so lopsided. The timing was just off by half a second. It was really close as well. But like you said, like we could see what he was trying to do. Just very very unfortunate timing. And uh, maybe if Slack wasn't clearing the ancients, if like maybe if he was there, they could have killed the burning off quickly, and then they could have won the fight. But you know, it's just. In the wrong place at the wrong time. Yep. They they were beating on burning for like maybe half a second. Okay, Ember. Oh, Ember. Uh, Ember's gonna get lifted. He has a way out. Think? No, he doesn't. He just oh, wanna he play with Rubik a little bit, but Burning's like, yo, I'm here too. Thanks for the feed. Don't forget the Diffuser Blade, man. Takes care of the Flame Guard. Not gonna save you, man. He's just gonna die. But look at the Slark. You see, he's all the way behind. They might be put to find a kill. Do they okay. know Treant? Do they know the- oh no, uh, Treant? Okay, he didn't have vision. He was in Shadow Bay. Or oh, Invisible actually, for the Magnus. So, alright, now they need to play a bit more passive. But here's the thing, they Burning will... has Aegis this time, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not okay. a good fight here. This is not a good fight. Q put down a sentry. Another sentry, making sure that they don't get surprised. Puck blinks oh, in, coil, silence going on too. The shrine gets activated, so Puck is out on the left side. Blink, Omni Slash coming through the overgrowth there as well. They kill the Pudge, RP is gonna be there just to control, but here comes Medusa again with the stone gaze. That's gonna prevent anybody from doing any damage. Two people stoned, and now they need to jump back out. Slark on the back line, getting focused and followed by the Puck. The Dagon's gonna come through. That is a five man team wipe. Nobody died, not even the Aegis. And that was a fight. Over the shrine that they won, I don't think IGV was all five when the fight actually begun. But by the end of it, especially when the Dusa came in, there was just no chance. That was just great game sense and uh, great reflexes coming up from Yang as well. Like uh, that's why I said that wasn't a good fight because even though you had the RP, you just were lacking the fall of damage and uh -oh. the win conditions for you there were not good because you needed to start the fight on your terms, not if they get the initiation on you. So now this is going to be a lane of racks, maybe even two. Yeah. They don't have RP. I mean, they still have Aegis, so it would surprise me if uh, they all go back here. They could just ride the momentum mid. The, the creep wave is all pushed in as well, but it looks like they're okay to drag out this game out long. They're going to push the tier 2 up top. Could also go back and take down all these shrines, which is what they're pinging out right now. And it seems like Rubik has gotten in power again. It's a great spell to steal anyways. Give yep. it to the jug. Give it to the tree and like you said, give it to Medusa for all that matters. Sure. 50% increase in damage seems okay. <laughs> is it 50 now or is it they nerfed it? Oh, they're still uh, 50. Okay. Nah, uh, still 50, yeah. And I mean, we could talk about the Medusa as well. Like every time, if you notice, she's been getting all the kills. She's just been cleaning up. That's what she's been doing. Yeah. Every single time. Look at the net worth, 18,000. Holy shit. Oh, they all wanna right. go, they wanna go. I, I don't think that's the right play though. Oh, well that, that's, that's the game, dude. Ember Swim missing the chain combo. And meanwhile, look at these illusions on the bottom side. The Juggernaut, the Medusa illusions. Threatening uh, some shrines. 
The scary thing is, for the dire side, IG Vitality, I don't even think they have enough damage to kill the Medusa 5v1. Like, if she gets the stone gaze off, she just, she just walks off. Yeah, they basically need to kill everyone else first, and then kill the Medusa. Normally, that's how you deal with the Medusa anyways, but the big problem is, by the time you kill everybody else, Medusa, if she's alive throughout all of that, is gonna just kill your team. Like, her damage output is so insane. And I think from the looks of things, she is gonna take that plus two second uh, stone gaze talent that she took last time. And it's just absolutely brutal in terms of teamfight. We already saw how much stone gaze did in the last fight. Imagine if there was two more stuns, two more seconds of stun on top of that. Poor Slark, man. He tried to look away half a second more and he could have gotten away. But now, sneaky, sneaky plays. Slark going on uh, the Rubik. Going for the supports. Oh, he wants to train first. A tree and it's gonna be a tough kill. Medusa forced to pop the BKB. BKB. Defensive hook coming back out. Look at the HP! Oh my god! Again, that's a that's Medusa why. hitting you. That's why you keep that power in the Medusa, man. Let's look at the damage. Alright, but Ember doing a very good job slip pushing. Forcing everyone back. But these split pushing is not gonna do too much of anything. Like, again, there's tree. Tree eventually will heal these towers back to full. I say that though, nobody's going back to defend for now. Well, it's just a tier 1. Keep your eyes on the prize, starve the jungle out. You gotta go for the uh, flawless victory, you know? All your tier 1 towers at full HP as you throw them. <laughs> oh man, if they get a butterfly onto burning, I don't even, I'm not even sure what's gonna happen with the Slark. He doesn't even, he's not even close to the MKB. He's going for a defusal bit just for extra damage at this point. I think he wants the Fusal Blade to take away the living armor, right? That works? I'm pretty sure that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. But he has Dark Pack for that. He doesn't need the Fusal Blade. If anything, it's it's just like a cheap damage item at this point. It's, it kind of helps a tiny bit, you know? Maybe like 2% with the Medusa. But sure. the mana pool is so big. And then she she's almost on a butterfly. Ah, oh, there's just two big problems right now coming up. Lots of problems and not many answers. We haven't talked about the Hex onto the puck as well, man. Alright, Medusa will port to the top tower. One thing I've noticed is that, uh... Oh my god. Oh, Slark! Detection? No detection. Yeah, One thing I've noticed is that the, the, uh, the Chinese streams have never really been glyphing and using the, the living armor at the same time. If you do that, then the armor will not break. Maximum efficiency. And look at yeah, look at Bobaka, his items. He actually went for the pipe, no Aghanim Scepter this game. Good choice. They they know they have to, it's a great advantage for them. It helps against the Ember Spirit as well. It negates so much of that damage, especially since you know they did buff pipe like a couple of patches back, even with the Hood of Defiance alone. So with a blink dagger, if he finds more overgrowth like what he did, he can really stall the fight momentum and that messes around with the Magnus. Because all he has to do is just like blink to the back line, that's it. Again, this game is not about the map control thing that they needed. Mm -hmm. It's more about just winning these heads-up engagements. And making sure that your team doesn't get RP is probably priority number one. And Slark's on the hunt again. I, I have to credit Paparazzi, right? Yeah. Again, he was three times a third of uh, Puck's net worth at a certain point, but he seemed to recover so well. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if this is close to being enough, because... Compared to Dusa's net worth, he is still like, what, 7,000 net worth behind? Lane could have been a bit, a bit different, but this is where you also start to see the Pudge pick fall off. Like you said, during the draft, the Pudge does thrive on having the advantage, but now because, you know, he, he only had like, what, 5 minutes of shining time, but after that he just kind of fell off. Like now, all he's used for is as a, basically as a defensive support. You could have used a, a Dazzle for that, you could have used an Oracle, but using the Pudge defensively, not ideal. Yeah. Especially against this lineup. I, I think Pudge does have merits in high ground defenses, right? For example, if you hook one in. Mm, yeah, the, the, the pick off, yeah, the pick yeah, off yeah. potential. And that's something Dazzle cannot do. But I hear you, like, I think Pudge as a defensive support, and especially in a game when you're losing, is just not very good. Oh! I mean, I'm not, I'm not discrediting the hero, I actually really like it as well, but maybe a Glimmer Cape or something would help them out, like, at least save a core, save the Slark. 
Ether Lens wouldn't be really doing much if you can get it. I mean, that's better for the obviously for the pickoff potential on the high ground. But now this is just hard. You have to depend on the Ember to split the map. You see, he's gone for the Radiance build. So, Radiance Octarine Core. Yeah, he just needs to keep this up. We'll see what he can do. Yeah, they're. I mean, look at the past five minutes. Despite IG having a humongous lead, they are just looking to defend their towers. They're yeah, they're just waiting pretty hard. Yeah. He runs up anyways. I hope Trian is uh, keeping these towers pretty topped off, and he is. Tier 1's taking some beating right now, but... Okay, well, that was a bad living armor. But, uh... It's all good, it's all good. Yeah, I think they even know that the Roshan tank is happening, so they just want to take the mid... I mean, the bottom tier 1 at least. Get some gold. Got a tier one, hooray! No perfect game for the tree in this game. Yeah. When immediate TP's back, Slug just wants to clear off one more creep wave. He's also trying to build into an MKB. He understands the importance of it, especially since there are two butterflies on the enemy team. Alright, Radiant will go for a top push. Top push is actually 4 HP, but here oh, comes that hook behind the tower. Mantis tower is gonna get popped immediately. Puck joins in, Coil only finding the one. Alright, defensive force app will bring him back out. Medusa still locked down. Might have to turn up that stone gaze. She's got the Aegis. She got pushed all the way back to the tier 4. She's like, okay, guys, you guys all gaze up. I'm gonna just right click the RP. It's not gonna do anything. The Omnisat's gonna come through. Oh, Burning says, save some fun for me. Four dead already. Only one buyback. That's good game. Young things, man. Young things. Alright. Let us take this time to appreciate like the puck. He dumpstered the lane so hard that despite being able to come back to such a good extent, like give cre slight credit for being able to farm up as like as high as he did. But that puck really shat on the lane so hard. Look at his net worth, man. 20.7 .7, Midas and Blink before like what 14 minutes, 11-3-13. He did so much. He did more damage than burning. Yeah, it's pretty common for a puck to like deal a ton of damage in the mid game because you know all that AOE stuff. But yeah, like you said, I am super impressed with XSS play. You know, I when you when you see an off lane puck being drafted, you're like, okay, he's gonna do fine. He's not gonna do great. But I think with the help of Q and also Treant, he was able to that puck or that that slug is gonna have PTSDs of pucks from this moment on. But, uh, alright guys, that's game one in the books. IG takes over IGV uh, in game one. This is the best of five, so we could possibly have four more games. We're guaranteed to have two more. We'll take a short break. We'll be back for game two, guys. See you in a bit.